Hello. Vince Murdoch, uh, 30 years old, fighting out of Sacramento, California, by way of Michigan. Good to see you, Vince. It's uh, been quite the journey for you to, to get here to this point, right? So, I mean, what's, what's the feeling like for you right now? Uh, you know, it is, and the journey's still going, and it's going to continue to go, but uh, ultimately, man, I am just humbled to be able to compete again and just be here and have another opportunity. Um, I can't say that enough. I can't you know, take for granted my ability or the ability to be an athlete and to c compete, so. I mean, it felt like it was going to be taken away from you, right? I mean, what did you... Well, it was. Uh, it, yeah, right? I mean, it was. <laughs> Multiple so. times, but, you know, uh, I'm never going to give up, and then, you know, they're going to have to bury me, so. I was going to ask you, was there any point along the way where you just said, like, dude, this is not where, like, clearly this is not supposed to be for me or something? You know, uh, I've had a couple close people to me mention that, and I was just... Uh, and I felt, I felt something push another way. I felt that it was something I was supposed to overcome versus, you know, bow to it. So um, every appointment I went to, anything, um, any shortcoming, I just kept thinking that it was an adversity that, that was given to me to be overcome. So, you know, 20 doctor's appointments, whatever it was, uh, it was those were to, to tell me that I can't, and it was up to me to show them I could. Yeah, it's... I mean, obviously, it's part of your story, right? I mean, you're never going to get yeah, away from it. No. But, I mean, is there any part of you that is, like, I don't want to talk about what I've got. I just want to be a fighter, like, competing. Yeah, you know, for the, honestly, uh, I haven't done any since my brain surgery. I've spoken very little of my disease and just recently kind of started opening up and about it. For a long time, I thought I was going to be judged, which that is going to be happen regardless. Um, I didn't want to be looked at as you know, someone at risk. I didn't want the UFC to be like, this guy's nuts. Um, I just didn't want people to know what it was that I, that I have. And um, yeah, I, uh, I also didn't want to keep dwelling on the fact that I have a brain disease. It, it, to me, it's obviously something I'm going to always deal with, but I want to, I don't want to say it's in the past, but the surgery's in the past, right? So uh, I don't want to keep going back there. And it's okay to talk about, um, but to me, it's like every time I'm speaking about it, I'm putting myself there, and I'm past that. I am, uh, I've overcome it, and I'm here to, you know, show people how to live and how to do it. That's awesome. I know you don't want to spend time, you know, just living in the past, but what changed that you said, you know what, it is, it is worth talking about. It's okay to talk about this. Like having another half of my brain, what changed? Like <laughs> that? Or, uh, oh, okay, I see what you're Like what made me want to start talking? Um, I belong to a couple of the groups that, that suffer from diseases like mine and similar experiences. Whether I mean, you don't have to have a disease to experience severe adversity. And... Um, I just think the willingness to want to help people um, has changed my perspective. Uh, I have people message me or, or come out and reach out and just say, hey, you know, seeing you do these things and, you know, um, I am losing a lot more than I am winning. And I think people see that. So uh, I think if I can show anybody, you know, how to live and, and how to overcome some of their adversities and stuff like that and, and – I think that's why I want to talk about it. I want to do it for the people that maybe can't do it. Um, I belong to a group. A lot of them, you know, this disease, whether it's from the disease or not, suffer from strokes and things that uh, that they're never going to come back from or have a hard time coming back from. And, uh, you know, I don't want to say I got it easy, but um, I still have the ability, and I want to make sure I don't take that for granted, and I want to speak for them and, and fight for them and fight for the people that, that uh, you know, that it's not over, like, these guys that are suffering, uh, you know, keep fighting because uh, it's never over till it's over. That's awesome. So the Ultimate Fighter, uh, automatically, you know, when they, when they announce, hey, it's coming back, we're going to do it again, did you go like, yeah, that's a spot for me? Or, you know, <laughs> a guy with your experience, did you go, ah, I don't know if that's a fit for me? You know, uh, it actually was the day of my contender fight, so I literally lost like an hour before it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that was a fight that I took – I just, you know, I made up my mind that I wanted to fight within a year of my brain surgery. I came back, I think, two weeks or two or three weeks prior within my one-year anniversary of brain surgery. I was two months clear to, to compete again. I just got licensed in Nevada like three weeks ago prior to that. Um, you know, I didn't know. All I know is I wanted to compete. I want to compete at the highest level. 
that's all I care about. Um, you know, I've been in this sport a decent amount of time, so uh, I don't know if I – I just wanted to know if I still had an opportunity and a shot at this sport and at this, this promotion. And, uh, you know, whatever chances they'll give me, I'll take. That's awesome. So – I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think a lot of us were surprised you took that contender series fight, right, with all the circumstances. So in yeah. retrospect, maybe not the best decision. <laughs> you know, uh, I took it on two weeks. Uh, you know, I, I hate I hate saying it, and I and I'm always trying to find ways to convince myself that that uh, I have an excuse for losing, and but there is no excuse. Um, the uh, Luis was uh, had a 10 inch reach advantage on me. I'm short, and I have no business being at 145. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, it might have been a little fresh from, you know, I mean, I, I still was training, but, like, you know, I was still recovering from, you know, a life-changing experience, and maybe a little more time might have been what was best, but uh, fuck it. It's life. It's life. I like it. So can you compare yourself, I mean, today versus going into this, you know, basically experience versus that fight? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't want to say I've experienced any, like, ring rust or anything. Uh, even before that fight, it had, you know, this whole brain thing has taken, you know, I got, I was picked up by the UFC when I was 28. I am now 30, just being able to, to fight again. And, uh, you know, and I think I had just turned 28, so I was, like, 27. Um, it's taken you know, some, some, some of my youth, I guess. So, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I dig it. Last thing for me, uh, I mean, does this feel like make or break? Does this feel like, like this has to happen now? Or is this just, you know, the next step on the journey and hopefully it works out the right way, but it's not, you know, the end if it doesn't work out. <laughs> you know, uh, it does sort of feel like that. Um, it does... I don't ever want to say it's over because I, I, I want to, you know, fight as, as long as I'm medically fit and cleared. It's something I, I love to do. It's something I'm passionate about. Um, as long as I'm healthy to compete, I will continue to compete. I think, uh, I think athletes in general are very, very lucky to be able to be on a platform, and a lot of them take it for granted. Um, although we are sacrificing a lot, there's a very small percentage of people in the world that can – even show up so um i don't know if it's make or break for me it does sort of feel like it uh this means a lot more to me nowadays yeah i got a baby on the way i got more to fight for um so you know i, I don't know i don't like to think of like that uh just enjoying everything i'm humbled by the experience and uh i love to fight so let's go I was going to ask you about your baby, you know, coming up in August, right? Um, how yeah. does it feel to be inside the house for all this time without, you know, contact? <laughs> Man. <laughs> um, well, if my wife sees this, uh, it's going to suck. <laughs> uh, but if she doesn't see this, um, it's nice to have a little break from, you know, <laughs> catering and... <laughs> doing all those things <laughs> i'm just kidding my wife is the real mvp the the vip of uh of the murdoch family she is uh she's a champ she she does a lot for me she's even gifted me this opportunity to come out here and take some time away from from all this right in the heat of everything she's uh like six months you know deep and uh you know it's it's um Missing a few ultrasounds, which which I think I would have missed anyway due to the COVID circumstances. But um, I don't know. Uh, part of me is 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 happy that I'm like away from all the 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 you know the, the phones and, and stuff like that. Kind of like a detox and just a, a reality check, getting away from you know what this new generation of we're in, the Instagram and all that. Um, but yes, I miss my wife very much, uh, my, my, my baby to be, um, they're a huge part of my everyday life. So, um, I'm glad I was able to take a photo just today. It's only been a day and I picked it up today and I was like, man, that's the only thing that can really bring a smile to my face instantly. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see, you know, I'm only one day in. <laughs>